What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Shoehorn. I'm your host, TJ Void, and this week, just like every week, we're going to cover the latest and greatest in the week that was in sneakers. So sit back, relax, and enjoy episode five of The Shoehorn. So we saw a glimpse of the Zoom Hyperflight China pack. Uh, the Hyperflight was reintroduced with the superhero pack that made special uh, makeups for Kobe, KD, and LeBron. And upon initial view, everybody went crazy over them. They're saying, man, I can't wait, I can't wait. But you can still get those. Like, they're still readily available. Uh, when the Hyperflight first dropped in 2001, they were pretty popular. A lot of people had them. A lot of people wanted them. They were different. An all patent leather, bright shoe. So they were popular then. But it seems like they're not as popular now, even though a lot of people want them. Uh, the China Pack kind of pays homage to the three biggest cities in China, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. And they, they've done it a little bit more special than the last ones. They have, you know, the tiger stripes on one, a golden weave pattern on one, and a gradient kind of translucent gray on the other. So y'all tell me, do you like this one? Is this something that you think you can wear? Are the hyperflights just too hard to wear with an outfit? Uh, let me know what you think and why you think that the superhero pack are just sitting on the shelves. And we finally got a full glimpse of the Packer shoes, Reebok Kamikaze 2. They're calling it the Remember the Alamo. Not because Sean Kemp is from Texas, he really has no ties other than he did play Juco here in Texas, but it's because of the 1996 NBA All-Star game that Sean Kemp played in. It was his fourth one, but the uniforms for that game were so crazy. They had teal and white, and then they had like the little pepper, you know, symbolizing the Tex-Mex feel of San Antonio, but the shoes on these particular kamikazes are reflective of those uniforms. They're probably, to me, they're the best All-Star uniforms they've had. There were some dope ones the year before, if you look back in 1995 All-Star game in Phoenix. Sean Kemp didn't have this particular shoe, but he did debut a brand new Kamikaze colorway in that All-Star game. But that All-Star game not only had crazy uniforms, but there were so many, so many dope kicks that have come back now that we probably will buy today. Uh, the, there was a new colorway of the Grand Hill 2. David Robinson had on the Nike Air 2 Strong. Charles Barkley had on Air Max CB34s. And there were a bunch of different colorways of the Zoom Flight 95s, including a white and red pair that Brent Berry won the slam dunk competition in. But we all know. We all know, and if you don't know, you will now. The shoe that was the most notable in that 1996 game, even though Penny made noise with the black uh, Penny 1s, Michael Jordan, playing in his first All-Star game after his initial retirement, came back and he brought out the Columbia 11s. And we still want those shoes to come back. They still haven't retro yet. They're one of the few Jordans that haven't. I don't know what the holdup is. I personally would go to great lengths to get this. This is probably my favorite Jordan, without a doubt. So tell me, I wanted to give you a little bit of background information on the shoe, because like I said last episode, knowing the history is important to appreciate the shoe. But let me know what you think of this Packer uh, Kamikaze 2. We'll call it the Remember the Alamo. I think they're dope. I personally want a pair for myself. Also, let me know if you're looking for the Columbia 11s to come back. Some people don't like them, which is a surprise to me. But let me know what you think. The Columbia 11s haven't come back yet, but one Jordan that we know is going to return is the Air Jordan 1 black and red, the OG colorway. A lot of us know them as the band ones due to the 2011 model that was limited that had the X on the back to commemorate the NBA banning the original colorway that dropped when Jordan wore them on court. Uh, they said they didn't match the uniforms. They said there wasn't enough white on them. So they became known the band ones. This particular version looks to take away the X on the back and just have the Nike Air symbol as well as in true OG fashion has the Nike Air on the tongue branding instead of the Jumpman symbol. The Air Jordan 1 has been seen in different colors. Numerous builds, high, lows, mids, uh, the KO version, but it always seems that the original colorways, the shadow gray, the black and royal, the black toe, and this black and red colorway are the ones that are the more popular ones whenever they drop. So I wanna hear from you. What is it about the OG colorways that make them so popular? Is it the story behind them? Is it because maybe you may have had them back when they originally dropped in the mid 80s? Or do the band ones appeal to you enough to where this particular model is another model that you wanna pick up? Uh, let me know. For me, I like the colorways themselves. I've always liked the Jordan 1 build and I always like the original color blocking, but I wanna hear from you. What do you like about the original Jordan 1s that make them so popular every time they come out? Last week on Nice Kicks, we had a feature that discussed the explosion of baseball cleat PEs and whether the trend will grow, which I happen to think it would, but it's a good read, but it just so happened that David Price, pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays, 
Instagrammed a picture of some amazing Air Jordan 13 cleat PE. They were all black. Uh, there were three different colorways actually. It was a black and white pair, a black and silver pair, and then a mostly black pair that only had a white outsole. But what, what that brings up is that there's been just so many, so many baseball adapted PEs this year, including uh, CC Sabathia had a special 200th Air Jordan 11, but he's been wearing Air Jordan 11 cleats on the field for quite a while. Uh, Jimmy Rollins first started seeing him last year when he had an all red pair, and then he would wear 12s. And it's just been seeing like it's been a growing trend. Uh, we even seen somebody with a Kobe 8 uh, cleat here recently. If you haven't, you should check it out. When George Hill went and visited Kansas City Royals pitcher Jeremy Guthrie on his sneaker vault. Sneaker vault, not closet, vault. Where he had dope, extremely dope baseball adaptation cleats. I mean, they, these are colorways from CC and Jimmy and uh, David Price and even some that Jeremy had that we haven't even seen these colors. We, they've never released. They have no uh, tie to anything other than one, David Price had an obsidian baseball cleat. But what I wanna know is would you like to see these different colorways that even though they're kind of tailored to the team's uniforms, would you like to see these released? It seems like these guys are becoming more and more interested in rocking nice kicks on the baseball diamond. So let me know of a shoe that you think that maybe a basketball sneaker or a running shoe of some sort that you think would be dope as a baseball cleat PE. We've reached the comment corner where we scroll through all the different social media fronts, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even our website through the comments to see what you guys are saying. And I get to comment on what you comment. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Underneath episode four of the shoehorn, I came across a suggestion, which is probably the most suggested thing or the biggest question that comes across when in terms of sneakers and their release dates and you not being able to get your hands on them. So it says, why doesn't Nike and Jordan just make enough pairs so that you wouldn't have to wait hours throughout the night to get a sneaker? That doesn't make much sense to me. And when they restock online, everything is bought it. So restocks online don't really make much sense. Now, here's the thing. There is no possible way that Nike and Jordan can make enough sneakers to satisfy the entire community. That makes absolutely no sense to even suggest, nor does it make any type of business sense. Because if you knew that they were always going to be readily available, you wouldn't buy them. Number one. Number two, nobody makes you wait in line for sneakers overnight. That's not a must. You, it, I know you want the sneaker. I want the sneaker. Everybody wants the sneakers, but you're not privileged to have the sneaker. You get it? Part of the game is you get some, you miss some. You have to hunt some down, that's a part of the game. So when you all say that the game is messed up, I don't think you fully understand the sneaker game. No business, no business makes enough to where there's a surplus. Thing is, when there's a restock, you have a chance to get them. I know the system is a little flaky. I understand that, I get frustrated as well. But if you want the sneaker bad enough, there's ways you can get the sneaker. So the whole notion that there should be more sneakers made, that is what makes no sense. And another thing, be more selective. You don't need every shoe. How many times do you buy a shoe and it sits in your closet and you wear it maybe once, maybe twice a year? And it's cool to have. I mean, it's cool to take a picture and Instagram it. But do you really need it? Be more selective, man, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you that your disappointment will decrease. So we all know on big, energy release weekends, there are a multitude of struggle tweets from people who didn't get their chance to get their hand on whatever shoe is hot that weekend. So I personally get entertainment from that. So without further ado, I'm gonna read you three of them and I'm gonna let you react as I react. The first one, them door breaker threes are ugly. They just hyped. When they first came out, I remember them sitting on shelves. Sitting on shelves? The door breaker three, what shelf? I need to see this show. Show me the shoe facts. I want to know. Second, my man says, was really praying I could get those Dornbecker threes this morning. Shaking my head. Praying? Like on your knees praying? Maybe that's why you missed them. Man. You, you were praying and you know the, the tweet came, you missed out. But praying? There's bigger things to pray for. Last but not least, my man says, I hope everybody with the Dornbeckers die. Die. Dead, gone, like killed, not breathing anymore. Really? Dead? Listen, you, got, you gotta apply some chill on these weekends, man. There are bigger things in life. Underneath episode four again of the shoehorn, 
I had someone give me a suggestion for a topic, and it reads, on the next show, can you talk about people buying sneakers and not matching? LOL. I don't know if it's supposed to be cool nowadays not to match, but if you're going to spend 200 or more dollars on some kicks, at least take find to find a matching outfit. No. That's it. We've reached the end of another episode of The Shoehorn. Shout out to the last commenter, but we're not going to talk about matching uniforms on here or outfits or anything close to it. But continue to tune in. Continue to comment. We want to hear from you. Hit us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, underneath the YouTube section. Go to our site. Comment there. We want to hear from you. We want to get involved. We appreciate you checking out every single episode. We'll be back next week with a new episode of The Shoehorn, a sneaker show unlike any other. And as always, I am your host, TJ Void, and I am not here to offend anyone. But if the shoe fits, Instagram it. We out.